Hey everyone, TV here, and in today's YouTube video, we're going to be playing a deck that I consider playing for the World Championship. That happened about a month ago. Uh, so in case you don't know, I played. I ended up playing Mono Green Aggro at Worlds. It wasn't the most successful deck of the tournament. Let's put it that way. It put up a pretty bad win rate, even though it is actually doing quite well now on ladder and in tournaments. It wasn't good for that tournament. Uh, but I thought it was the best choice then. But there were a bunch of decks that I thought were really close that were interesting and different and I felt if something was different then maybe they could have been a good choice right if maybe the meta game was different than what I expected or if someone came up with a card that I, I wasn't thinking of that they could push them over the edge and turn them into actual uh, you know real tier one decks that would have been a good choice for the world championship and I wrote an article on Star City Games about this I had a bunch of lists of decks that I almost played at Worlds and after that, I went to my uh, Discord group for the subs, the Patreon subs, and I had them vote on which of the decks they wanted to record with. And the vote was pretty evenly split between the Rakdos Vampires that you saw last week uh, and this Mono Blue Delver deck. Right, so I ended up recording with both because they were the two that got the most votes from the patrons. And this deck is, uh, again, very different from what you might see in this format, but it is just a Delver deck, right? It, the, the key is like it's a Delver of Secrets deck and then you have Ascendant Spirit, which is sort of similar to Delver of Secrets, and you have the Suspicious Stowaway, which you know, in a way it's on Delver of Secrets card too, right? Obviously there are different cards, but the goal is you play something early and then you never cast another spell again, you just attack every turn and you counter everything they play and eventually you win the game, right? And all these cards serve the same function. And the thing that sets this deck apart from previous iterations of this deck that I had seen at least is the Imrith Desert Doom. Because that is a card that can get you back in the game if your early game is not successful. Because most of the time, if you do stick these early creatures and you're not rushed over, then you're going to win the game, right? That That is, is going to be a very successful uh, strategy. But if they kill your early creatures, then you're like, okay, you know, you have Soy coming, uh, you have Fading Hope to bounce stuff, but you're buying time for nothing. Right, uh, eventually you're just gonna, you know, it's gonna be turned safe or you're gonna draw Delver of Secrets, it's not gonna do anything. So people killing your very early creatures is a problem, and that is uh, where Imrith comes into play, right? Because even if they kill your Delver, they kill your Suspicious Stowaway, uh, on just on turn 5, just land Imrith, and then you get to untap, attack with it, and protect it with like Negate and Side Coming, and you get to bounce the creature that they play. And then it's a pretty good card once it connects, and in this deck, you actually draw more than one card with it relatively often because uh, your entire deck is so cheap that you, you get to uh, just cast a bunch of spells and, and draw more than one card. So this card is very good here. The sideboard is, I think, the weakest point of this deck because being mono blue, and you have to be mono blue because you, you, you want to play Ascendant Spirit, right, as another powerful one drop, or at least I think you do. Uh, being mono blue, you don't have access to a lot. So you have some more counter spells, and then you have, you know, cards like Tempted by the Auric, which are okay, but, uh, you know, pretty bad versus... You know, Elite Spellbinder or uh, Snake Skin Veil, or so they're not even that good in the matchup they're supposed to be good in. Uh, and then, then like, anti spells, counter spells, right? Hermits and Constructed Defenses and Zdenful Strokes and stuff like that. And then the you have the, the targets for the, the lesson, right? The Divide by Zero card. So I think this deck uh, is reasonable. It is much better than it looked, right? I think it's actually uh, a, a good deck that I would like to iterate on and. I'll be paying attention to the new set in Historic Kings and Vow to see if it has anything that can push this deck over the top. Yeah, and let's get into a game. Wait, wait. Say hi to Emma. She's barely on camera, but Emma, say hi to the people. Yeah, I have two dogs, Emma and Mocha, and Emma is always the one that you might see in the videos because she's jumping around and and stuff, and, and Mocha just mostly sleeps until it's time for her to go out, and then she freaks out and really wants to go out every day, but then she goes out for half an hour, comes back, and she just sleeps the whole day again. All right, so, I mean, as far as one landers go, this is pretty reasonable because it has a Delver and the Concerted Defense, which is already on, like, it's already a two for the Delver, and the Fading Hope, so if they do play something early, I can play the Fading Hope. Uh, and like either I'm flipping the Delver or I'm drawing lands, mostly, right? So it's actually kind of tempting to keep this hand. But I don't think I should, I think it's too risky. I think like, even if I flip the... Yeah... Actually, it might be okay. But like, if they have a removal spell, I have to... I'm gonna keep. It's an experimental keep. 
Scythe Manfield will keep. Scythe Manfield will probably not be playing this deck, though. But I think the fact that, like, obviously if I start hitting creatures, like if my top card is Imrith, then that's going to be a disaster, right? But the fact that, you know, I have turned one Delver, and I'm either drawing lands or spells. See? There you go. Perfection. I think I would rather put Psyche come in. Like, if they play a Ranger class, I can consider to defense it, right? Which would be pretty okay. If they play a Wolf, I can just bounce it and try to find another land to then play Divide by Zero, or... I think that's gonna pass here. If I see a good spell, though, I'm probably just gonna keep it. Well, not that one. Well, now I'm in trouble, though. I could just pass. And play the, like, if... Because if they go Wolf Blizzard Brawl, I can play Concerted Defense and stop it. But then if I don't draw a land, it's really bad. But I think I it might just be the best. Like they know I have this in my hand, so they they must know I have something. Like if my Delver dies, it's gonna be pretty bad. Alright. So now, did they, what do they have? Snake skin veil? That it's pausing for them here? So if I do try to bounce in it, it has snake skin veil, it's really bad. But at the same time, like, if I just counter it, am I winning this game? They know I have the counter. They don't know I have the divide by zero. So, like, clearly they have a plan for my counter, right? They might not have a plan for my divide by zero. If they do have the veil, then it's eh, it's pretty bad for me. But like, I feel like I'm in a pretty bad spot here. All right, am I just dead here? Pretty dead, I think. Yeah, this hand does not pan out. I even drew a land immediately, but I needed more than one. The way this game turned out. Yeah, I'm just dead here. I think. Okay, so we want the Tempted by the Auric. And I think we want the Imrith. I don't think we want... Like, I think Negate is better than this Dangful Stroke in this matchup for sure. I don't think we want this Stroke. And I, I, we might not want like the side comings too. It's just so many counters. The defense is actually okay, I think. Like I think I want to fight over the like the cheap spells, which makes the defense worse. But like side coming is so bad at fighting over those. Yeah, I think this is reasonable. I'm glad it's the same hand, except now I have the consider, so now I think it's an easy keep. And if I draw a land on turn two, I have the stowaway, which is like pretty good turn two versus mono green, because then on turn three, you can just pass. Yeah, I'm gonna bounce whatever they play here. I guess I'm not going to bounce anything. <laughs> yeah, this game, it looks like they're in a lot of trouble. Like, they don't have a 2-drop. Oh, are they going to... Ugh, never mind. Could bounce it, but I don't think... I don't think that's worth it. I think I have to, like... Try to win the game with my Stowaway and, like, Imrith. Mm, I 
probably want to ditch a land. Like, I'll have two draws to draw a land here. And the spell, my spells are really good. What do I want? Oh, okay. I was gonna draw the. I get the character to draw a bunch of cards. I think. Okay, yeah. This is how we win with this deck. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was a somewhat atypical game that they were they didn't. They, they did have a two mana card though. Being on the draw with this deck it makes things much tougher. This is sort of true with any deck, but more so with this this deck than than most, I think. I think I just want to play the stowaway here. And like, if they're gonna fight me, then they can fight. Like, it's it's pretty pretty weird to keep a fading hope when they have the veils. Like, this wasn't even that bad, right? Probably wanna play Island, because if I wanna play Consider or Fading Hope, I'm not gonna attack on turn four anyway. Okay, they passed it four mana. Do they have like more inscriptions? I think I have to pump this anyway. Like if they have inscription, that's whatever. Never, never lucky. I'm not gonna pump this yet, I don't think. What can they have? They almost certainly have snakeskin veils, right? Maybe I should just pass and like play consider and uh, hope to draw Emirate. I don't want to pump this because they they can have the tingle root thing or whatever. So maybe this is best. So I can consider and pump this spirit. Because like they have four cards in hand. What can they be? Right? They're probably not removal. So the snakeskin veil is possible. Ren and seven is possible. And the tangle root thing is possible. Should I try to respond and then like be met with Veil here? I think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, that was a relatively short match, so we can play one more. Even though we went to three games, my opponent considered pretty aggressively. Game two, they were definitely bad. This game, I did not think they were dead, but I also don't know what their hand was. Like, maybe it was just a bunch of lands, right? Then they were dead. <laughs> that was the case. All right. You're keeping... This card is very good. It just doesn't have a home. Like, it's not good in this format, I don't think, but it's such a strong card if the, the shell for it exists. Like, if this was around when Rogues was a deck, I think it would have been incredible. Because the uh, well, first is a Rogue, and then you can just pass the turn and flip it. It's so easy. And you, you didn't want to cast your spells on your turn anyway. Cleric class, huh? So I'm playing versus clerics. This is fine. Turn three, I'll probably just play two things rather than flip this. But sometimes you like if my opponent just yeah, sometimes it will flip just because they don't do anything. Yeah, the next turn is the turn I'm gonna pass, right? Yeah, 
And now this flip, and my, if my opponent can't play two spells here, they're probably dead. Alright, that is entirely acceptable. I'm just gonna bounce this. Oh, that's kind of bad though, because maybe they can't, they have another land, then they could just replay this. And they'll flip my things. Never mind, they didn't have a land. They're dead. <laughs> yeah, now I just get to make this into a 4-4 four, four and like attack with my fist and save him too. So they're actually just dead. <laughs> okay, so we want a sideboard. I think, well, we don't want, I don't think we want negate or disdainful stroke or concerted defense here, right? We probably just want, they're, they're a creature deck, but we want to tweet them to buy Oryx and are the one the Inrith here. Tricky hand, but I think disruption is pretty good. Like there are just spells here, right? Even though they're worse on the draw. Like my opponent has probably just gonna play three drops turn three and stuff. And I have a turn one delver, so I always fall for the turn one delver bait. Like I'm a I'm a delver happy person. You know how like in, in poker just the term ace happy? I'm delver happy. Yeah. I'm not gonna... Should I play this? I think I should. If they play a, a, a problematic 3-drop, I'll just steal it. And there's no point in playing the faces in here, because I'm not gonna activate on turn 4. Oh, I can steal this one. It's a pretty good one to steal. Like, sometimes if you have Faithless Haven and you don't activate it, it tips off that you have something, right? Mm. I mean, it's not even that big a deal, I'm just gonna kill it. Like, they'll kill one of my creatures, I'll kill the Kaya, and then they'll never resolve another spell again. Oh, now I'll just kill the Kaya and they'll never resolve another spell again. This? I could have foretelled this, but I think I'd rather just pass. Because like, now I can counter two things. They don't have two things, they don't have one thing. But, all right. So yeah, that's what I got for today. Uh, I think for the most part, like this deck, again, is much better than it looks. So if you like the style of deck, I urge you to give it a try. Um, it does, like, it looks like the kind of deck that is never going to be able to beat Mono Green, for example, but it's not actually true. Like, your deck is so cheap, and you have Flyers and Evasion, and their deck is kind of expensive and clunky. So you do end up beating them a lot more than it looks like you would. Uh, but yeah, that's what I got for today. And if you want to support my work uh, a little bit more, make sure to check out my Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash pvddr. And there you can uh, get some benefits, like being part of an exclusive Discord server, where stuff like this votes happen. Right, uh, I again, I uh, gave my patrons a list of decks that I almost played and asked them which ones do you want me to record with, and this was the one that won the poll alongside Vampires, so I'm recording this video. And a uh, special thank you to my supporters, my biggest supporters, uh, Adam Racy, Adrian Camilleri, Clix, Foxy, Fernando Vizio, Jan Jan, Igor Petrov, Jack Hart, Joey, Juan Chao, 
Kelvin Peng, Kevin Massey, Law Son, Matia Giardini, Nate, Safir Weapon, Silvia Leticia, Stu Cameron, Thomas Pocorni, and Dimitri. I really appreciate the support, and I'll see you next video.